The hollow tool is found under the edit tool hollow. And you will notice that when I executed that tool, Mesh Mixer analyzed the sphere and then it created two shells as you can see right here. The outer skin or the outer shell is the original mesh. And then the inside shell is the new cavity that Mesh Mixer created. I'm gonna go over the hollow settings right here. The offset distance of two millimeters, that's the thickness of our skin. If you want to change this, you can move the slider or you can click on the numerical input and type in a new number and then hit enter. But you will notice that nothing has changed. And that is because every time we make a change on the hollow attributes, we have to re-execute the hollow operation. So we're gonna go to update hollow and you will notice that mesh mixer is re-analyzing the mesh and assigning a new offset distance of four millimeter. Next, we have solid accuracy and mesh density. Those two settings are the same settings that we find in our make solid tool. The solid accuracy will approximate the inside mesh to the outside mesh. So it's gonna try to keep the shape as close as it can to the outer shell. And mesh density is the sampling rate that we generate when we adjust the inner shell. So if we lower the solid accuracy number, what's gonna happen is that our inside mesh is going to look less and less like the original object, the outer shell. So the mesh density will increase the amount of triangles. The higher the amount of triangles, the more the solid accuracy will be able to adapt to the outer skin. The last three settings, holes per hollow, hole radius, and hole taper, have to do with what we call drainage holes, holes that we can add to our hollowed object so that we can either drain resin if we're using a STL or DLP 3D printer and also for air intakes. So we prevent any form of vacuum as we're 3D printing in those types of 3D printers. So I'm gonna reset my offset to two millimeters. I'm gonna hit enter. Again, notice that nothing happens. I'm gonna click on update hollow. The mesh is getting updated. I'm gonna leave the solid accuracy and the mesh density the way it is. And now we're gonna add a couple of holes. So when I click on generate holes, you will notice that it's going to create two holes with a hole radius of 1.5 millimeters and a hole taper of zero. I will explain how to adjust these in real time. I'm gonna click on generate holes and you will notice that mesh mixer is going to add two holes and to move these holes, you're gonna click on this red sphere and you're gonna relocate their position. To add more holes, you would come to the attribute, holes per hollow, type in, for example, three, remove the holes and then regenerate the holes. The hole radius will control how wide these holes are. So for example, if I go to three, they're gonna be three millimeters in width. Let me move this sideways so we can see this better. For the hole taper, if I move this number to a positive direction, you will notice that the taper will increase on the inside. But if I go into a negative direction, you will notice that the taper will shrink. Once you're happy with what you want, you're gonna click on accept. And now we have a object that has an outer skin, an inner skin, and three holes. Now I'm gonna use the plane cut to show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna to go to plane cut. I'm going to slice this object. And I'm gonna click on cut discard half, but I'm going to discard the top half. So I'm gonna switch my arrow right here and I'm gonna click on accept so that you can see what happens. And this is the interior of our sphere. You can see the two millimeter wall thickness, the three holes, how they were tapered towards the inside. And this is the basics of the holo tool in Mesh Mixer. On the next video, we're gonna do the same thing, but on a more intricate object.